So, hello guys, my name is Max, and welcome to this video today, where we're going to program a simple Space Invader game using JavaScript and HTML as usual. For this one, I'm thinking of being a bit more structured than, than we have been before, so instead of just doing one file, I've used two files for this particular project. So I've just started by creating a new folder, and I'll call that Space Invader, or something like that. And so, okay, I want to make a new folder called JS, and a new one called Resources. And in the resource folder, we'll just copy over this image here uh, that with the basic sprite sheet or all the ghosts and the graphics we need for the game. Yeah. So let's just open this up with Sublime Text now. So Sublime Text like so. And in here, you can start by making a new file. We'll call it index.html. And then we can make a JS helper but JS like so. So you can start with the index file here, so let's grab some basic HTML, set the title to space invader, something like that, and then a script tag in the body. And then just make sure you import this, this source file here, so helpers.js, like to, and let's add some styling now while we're at it here in the head. So I'll just do a canvas center, like so. And I will set the background color uh, uh, to, let's say, black for now. Since, yeah, I think that's look a bit sp sp like space. So, that's it for the index file for now. So, let's start by doing our helper functions or classes, if you so will. So, we'll need our screen class, we'll need our sprite class, and we'll need some. Uh, sorry, our uh, input handler, and we of course need some helper functions here. Well, actually, we can actually start with screen here, so I will just create a new function. So, if you're not familiar with how classes work in JavaScript, then they are basically just functions, and then you can add methods to them using the prototype keyword here. And for the screen, we will need a uh, draw sprite. Like so, and it will take a sprite as a first argument, and then an x and a y position where to draw that sprite. And yeah, I think that's it for now with the screen class. And the sprite, it won't have any methods, uh, but it will create this object here. So it will take an image, an x position, a y position, a width, and a height. And these are the positions in the sprite sheet and the width and the height of the sprite itself. And for the input handler, you can make it now so input like two, it won't take any arguments, but we will have two methods. Uh, is down method, I'll take a code as a parameter, and then uh, is pressed method. That will take a code as a parameter, like so. And the help function we can leave empty for the time being. So we can start by creating our screen class here. So that's just be just canvas equals document create element canvas, as we have done in the previous videos of this. And then let's just set the width of the canvas and save that to a local or a method to this class here as well, so just a width here to the width parameter and let's set the height in the same way this height goes to the height, like so and then let's grab our context, so camera, this dot canvas dot get context, like so, to the context and then let's append it to the body of the document, so document body dot append child this dot canvas and the draw sprite, it will take this to the x, uh, draw image, I like you, and it will take sp.image, sp.x, sp.y, sp.width, and sp.height. And these are the coordinates on the sprite sheet or the image here to be drawn. So this will, of course, be these fields here later on when, when we have them in game. And then the x and y position on where the canvas draw them and the width and the height of the sprite here. That's the last two arguments. 
And the sprite is quite boring, just this image, this image, this x equals to x, this dot y, y, this dot width, this width, or w, and then the, the height as well, like so. And the input handle, it will have two fields, so it will have this dot down, like so, and this dot pressed, like so. And then we create this reference here. So we can keep a reference to this instance when we here are adding uh, event listeners. Listener like so. And that's the reason for key down, of course. Key, sorry. Uh, function with event callback. Let's just scrap down here. Change the word, key up like so. And we can start by this one. So this is quite simple. It's just this dot found event dot key code equals true, and then here we just want to delete the uh, sorry this dot down event dot key code and delete this dot press event dot key code all like true, and this down it just return uh, this down the code or like you and this one is a bit small code so we will say if this pressed code return false else if this down code return this pressed whoops code equals to true like you and if all fails we will just want to return false like you so that's it for the older helper function at least for now so we can actually start coding our game here now so for that let's go back here to the index file and as usual when I code my games I like to just write out all the variables we'll need so for this one we we'll need a screen a variable a input variable a frames variable like that for now then we need all of the sprites so I will have the alien sprite the tank sprite and lastly the city sprite like that and then do we need aliens for our logic and our direction in which the aliens are going tank, a list of bullets, active bullets on the screen, and then the cities. I like that for now. So, we can start off by just writing out the functions we will need. So we need a name function, of course. Um, a init function. A run function. Whoops. A run function. Uh, update function. I guess, and lastly, a uh, render function. And then, and then there is make sure we call the main function as always, or as usual, I would say. And then in here is create a screen, so new screen. And the size may perhaps be a bit strange by now, but uh, it will be 710 by 600. And important here is that it is multiply the uh, price of 30. So if you take 510 and divide that by 30, you get 70. And of course, if you get 600 divided by 30, you get 20. So just make sure they are even multiplies of 30. Like a shoe. And yeah, so we can start now by, yeah, let's see, declare our input here as well. So new input handler, like shoe. So we have that on. And yeah, so let's create a new image here. Yeah? And just set the source of the image. And this, of course, is this cheat image here. So, input, sorry, invaders.pank, PNG. Yeah, so, and that's this in the resource folder. So, the relative power part will be invaders.pank, or like two. And let's set a uh, event listener, like so, and then load event. We want to create this function. Like so, and in here we just want to call the init the run methods of 
functions rather. But before we do that, we just want to set our alien sprite, sprites, and the tank sprites and all that, those. So tank sprite. Uh, the new sprite I can stop like three. Then we have the city sprite, of course. New sprite. And the alien sprite here, it will contain a list with three elements in which each of them have a list with two elements, the two different versions of each of the ghosts or aliens. So to implement that, we just want to create three different, uh, what do you say? Yeah, elements like that, three lists. And in here, we just can say new sprite and new sprite like so. And all of those will have the same uh, Sucks. Let's do it like this then. We'll have the same image here. So we can just say this since this function of this one is pointing towards this object. So the this object in this instance here. One thing guys, I'm just take the phone. Like this 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 here will point towards this object or this image object. So, left to do is just to set all the coordinates, or if you look here in the helper, we will set the x position, y position of the sprite sheet we want to keep and the width and the height of the sprite. So, this can be a bit boring to watch me do this, but I can do the first here for you. So, that of course is starting on the 0 0 mode position, and the width of that particular sprite I happen to know is 22 pixels and the height is 16 pixels. And that's all, you know, all of the sprites here are 16 pixels high. And I think this is 22 pixel wide. This is, uh, where did I, yeah, 16 pixels wide is, is uh, square almost. And this is 24 pixels wide. So from that information, you can do the rest of these functions yourself. But anyway, I've shown here for you. So 0 and 0 and 22 and 26 for the coordinates of the first ghost element or first version of that alien and then the second one is of course 0, 16, 22 and 16 since it's just uh, offset by 16 pixels here to get this version and they're all pretty similar here so the next one it will just take 22 since it's uh, 22 pixels from the end here like that and it is as I said 16 pixels wide and 16 pixels tall and yeah of course it should be zero there as well and then here we'll say 22 pixels like that 16 pixels 16 pixels and 16 pixels like that for that one and the last goes is this on the 22 plus 16 positions is 38 like that, zero, and I said that was 24 pixels wide, 16 pixels tall, like that, and then of course we will be 38, zero, 16, 16, I said, and 24, and 16, like that. So if we have done this right, then if you just do the run method real quick, so we just put a new function, inside it's called update and render method functions. And then just to use the render regular window request animation frame here for our animation with a loop and the screen. So we screen not the canvas, it's arguments like that. And in the render, let's just draw a sprite. So we call screen of draw sprite uh, alien sprite. Let's draw the first alien, and the first version of that alien, and let's draw it at the 1010. So if none is right, and if we open this up, so just that one, yeah, we can see here that this version of the sprite is drawn. So let's say if we draw the second version, so the second here, you can see that it's drawn like that, and let's just see if all of them. Okay, yeah, that seems to be all that's right, and that seems to be all that one. 
So that's working fine. So let's do the same here for the tank. So that will just be the 38 plus 24, 60, 62 position. Zero, of course, and it is 22 pixels wide, I guess. I think at least, and 16 pixels tall as well. So let's just draw it to see if it actually works. So tank sprite. Yep, that was a complete tank sprite. I think it is, so if it's take 20, yeah, it isn't on all of it. So, yep, 22 pixels wide. And for the city here, I'll just look up, side up there, and it's on the 84th position, 8 pixels down, 36 pixels wide, and 24 pixels tall. So that was all the sprites, hopefully. I won't bore you anymore with this for now. Yep, so that's it's the city sprite. So let's actually start creating our actual game then. So we just go to the init method, or function. Let's instantiate our frames to zero, I guess, and then we create our alien list as empty ray, and then we can just create rows here. So we want, if you look up the original game on the internet, you can see that we first have one row of these pink, pink aliens, then two rows of these ones, and then two rows of these ones. So to mimic that one, that's yeah, that, that rotation, we can just add it like this. We have first, second ghost, one time, then we have the first ghost two times, and then the last ghost two times like that. Then we just loop through all the rows here, so we'll add equals zero, then equals rows dot length, i is less than len, i plus plus like true, and then we just loop again for how many ghosts we want. So or j equals zero, j is less than let's say 10 ghosts, and j plus plus. And then we just create a reference here to the row where we're at, so row that i, and then we just push a new alien to our alien list. And it will have a sprite that is equal to alien sprite uh, of a, like that, so take the current alien sprite you want x position that will be offset by 30 pixels from the left at start and j times 30 for each of the sorry for each of the ghosts in position then we want to uh, add uh, four pixels if it is the second ghost because it's a bit smaller than the rest of them, than the other aliens, sorry. Like that, and for y position, that's just 30 plus i times 30. And then the width is just the alien sprite of a, and we can take the second, first version, it doesn't really matter, and the width of that one, and then we have alien sprite a 0.h, like that. So for now, if we draw of them, so we say 4 bar i equals 0, len equals aliens, length, i is less than len, i plus plus, and then we can say bar a equals aliens, print alien, and then we we'll say screen or draw, and sprite, a dot sprite, a dot x, and a y and I screw some, something up here ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, let's see in the console if we have some error messages type error uh, yeah we'll pause uh, here we want to specify which version so we just take the first version for now yeah so we now have this the, all of the alien drawn to the, to the screen here so let's make them move a bit. So for that one, we will need two more fields here. One for animation and one for the uh, one for how fast they move. So we have the sprite frame here, and we have the level frame. I like to call them. And let's set the sprite frame to zero or one. I will set mine to zero. 
than the level frame to some relative high number, so let's say 60. So each second now, since it's running at 60 frames a second, it goes for loop. And then update. All we need to do is basically just to increment the frames. So frames plus plus, and then we can say if frames modulus level frame, if that's equal to zero, then we want to set the sprite frame to the next version, so we can say equal to sprite frame plus one modulus two, like that. And then we just loop through all the uh, ghosts, so ri equals zero, len, actually we can just copy this line of code, it's a bit tedious to write it out all the time, like two. Let's set a reference to the alien we're at, so aliens fi, then just increment the x position for now. And I almost forgot we need a direction in which the... Yeah, we had that already, but let's set an initial direction, so let's say 1, and then we just multiply uh, this 30 here by the direction. So 1 if it's going to right, and negative 1 if it's going to go to the left. So hopefully now, the, uh, and if we just instead of zero here, set this right frame that goes to be moving to the right. Yeah, so you can see that they are moving to the right here, but we are redrawing over each other. So let's just create another method here to the screen class. Uh, screen and I put clear, and we'll say this does context clear rect. 0, 0, this the width, and this dot height, like so. And let's just call that method before we draw anything. So, screen not clear, like so. Yeah, now you can see the animation in action, and the ghosts are moving. But, as you can see, they're moving out of the canvas, and we don't want that. We want them to move down a bit here. And as you can see, they are moving all the way to the end here, so we want to just draw some small number here, I guess it's 6 pixels, so we'll just stick to 704 for now, let's see if that's better. Want to go faster. Blah, go faster, go faster. Nope. 2 pixels T, uh, more I guess. Yeah, and let's make them move faster, I guess ridiculous. Yeah, so that's the right width there for you guys. So five and two, two pixels if you use the same offset as I do with 30 pixels. Anyway, so to know if they should move down, we need to keep a reference to the maximum x position and the minimum x position. So we use this by using these uh, variables here. So we set the max position to zero at the start and the min position to the screen of width some big number, it doesn't really matter what number you set it to. And then you just say uh, max equals mat max of the maximum of the current value of the max and the a plus uh, dot x plus a dot y w like so. And then the minimum value equals the mat of min of the minimum value and the a dot x like so. And then we just say if the maximum value is bigger than the width and or the minimum value are less than zero then we just want to mirror the direction uh, like so and then we just want to loop again and uh, let's just say you see this syntax here for now so we just set the uh, increment the x position with 30 times there, like so, and then the y position with 30. So, yeah, so that should be it. So now they should be moving uh, down at least. If they could move a bit faster, that would be good. Yeah, so now you can see that they move like that. And to the left here, if you don't want them to move all the way to the end, you can set this to 30 pixels, I guess like true and let's speed them up so we don't need to stand here and look at them all day 
Yes. Yeah, so that's them moving about. Really good. Uh, the game is starting to take shape here. So let's just do the tank in this video as well, and we'll do the cities and the shootings and all that in our second video. So the tank is really simple. We can just go above the aliens, I guess. Yes, the tank goes a new object. Let's make sure that you have specified the tank variable up here. And let's just set the sprite uh, equals to the tank sprite. Of course, my X position. And with that, we will set that at the start here, of course, to the screen our width minus the width of the sprite and just divide that by 2 to center it like so. And then the height here is of the Y position, is just the height of the screen minus, uh, yeah, let's say 30 pixels and plus the sprite of height like so. So let's just draw it very quick. So screen draw sprite uh, tank dot sprite tank dot x and tank dot y. And let's do updates as well. It's really simple. You can say if input is down, and I won't type out the key codes here for you again, guys. But it's 37. Is, the, is left, let's put it like this, I guess, left. Then we want to subtract from the X position with, let's say, 4 pixels. And if the right key is pressed, so if it's down 39, like that, then we just want to add to the X, position, or X, X value. So plus equals 4. Oh yeah, you can see that I can move the move the tank. But as you can see, I can move out of the border here. So let's fix that. So we say tank x equals math min and math max regular way here. And the minimum value it won't it will be 30 pixels. And the maximum value will of course be the tank dot x for the screen the width minus 30 plus uh, tank no, width I guess but we didn't specify that one so tank sprite dot width and yeah and why did that do that Yeah, and it should of course be the min, and it should of course be the max. <laughs> I always screw them up, but yeah. So now I can't move out of both that direction or that, dire or that direction. So that's it, guys. Thank you for watching, and I will finish this game in a second video that I will upload really soon, I guess. Thank you for watching. Bye.